Greetings, my fellow Freedom Lovers and Sovereign Thinkers. This is LL3's latest podcast. My name is Craig, and I am presiding in the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today is Thursday, March 27, 2014. Yeah, it's a nice, pretty breeze. Semi clear evening. And uh, today I'm going to be doing uh, a few topics. Some good, some bad, but um, I'm going to start really with the more controversial title, which is called Outrageous Judge Gives State Permanent Custody of Utina Justina Pelletier. And this is from OffTheGridNews.com. Really good website, and they do have their own radio show. They got plenty of topics, and um, this is really gets my goat. When it comes to state knows best on children, and this was written by Daniel Jennings on that same date. So I'm going to narrate it and give you my intake. Okay, let's begin. The Pelletier family legal and medical nightmare just took a dramatic turn for the worse. A judge has given permanent custody of Janita Pelletier to the government of the state where her family doesn't even live. It's insane. Just need a sister, Jennifer Pelletier, said of her sister's predicament. I'm always hoping this would end. It was a complete shock that this would happen. Instead of returning to her family home in Connecticut, 15-year-old Justina just could remain under the care of the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families, DCF, until she is 18. The family's plight has been focused on several stories by Off The Grid News. Justina is a teenager who was separated from her parents and placed in a locked psychiatric ward after doctors at two different hospitals disagree of her diagnosis. Essentially, the parents lost custody because they believe one doctor is diagnosed but not the others. Juvenile Court Judge Joseph Johnson said that Lou and Linda Pelletier had neglected Justina and stripped them of permanent custody. Justina is currently being kept in a state facility and her contact with her parents is limited. The Pelletiers have filed a writ of habeas corpus asking for her release in Massachusetts Superior Court and a federal civil rights lawsuit. Judge asked parents... J- J- Johnson wrote that he stripped the Pelletiers of custody in part because they refused to cooperate with DCF and have filed a legal challenge to the state's position with the help of a legal group, Liberty Council. Okay. Several trends reveal that transform a society much like our own into Nazi Germany. That's a link. All right. I will proceed. This yet is yet in another example of the parents either directly or indirectly impeding progress in this case, Johnson wrote in his decision. Instead of engaging in quality visits with Justina, the parents used profanity directed at the MA DCF personnel in Justina's presence. There is no meaningful dialogue by the parents to work towards unification. The judge also seemed to consider the Pelletiers mentally ill and need of a psychological evaluation. Although psychological and clinical evaluations of the parents are necessary, I decline to order that these evaluations be conducted by the Boston Juvenile Court Clinic, Johnson wrote. Disputes continue, said Lou, Lou Pelletier. The system works perfectly for DCF and hospitals to take advantage of the system. Keith Ablo, a psychiatrist who serves as a medical expert for Fox News, says the judge injured every parent's rights. If Boston's Boston Children's Hospital wants to say that your child's mysterious physical symptoms are ones you are causing by coaxing your child to act sick, then to you could lose custody of your child to the state, he wrote. 
And it won't matter if academic doctors at another hospital disagree and believe that your child is suffering from a genuine bodily illness. Parents should have should avoid the hospital altogether, Albo suggested. Boston News, whether is it from Boston News Weather Report, Fox 25, my Fox Boston. I know there's a the video on here too. The Pelletier's dispute with DCF began last year when Justina was mo- was moved in from Tufts Medical Center. Doctors at Tufts had diagnosed the girl with mito mitochondrial disease, a rare genetic disorder. Doctor at Boston's Children's decided she had a mental problem called somatic symptom disorder, or SSD, and placed her in the psychiatric ward and asked DCF to take custody of her. There has never been a complaint about the Pilotier family regarding our daughter, our family, prior to Boston's Children's Hospital getting involved, Lou Pelletier told Fox News. The complaints have been when DSF decided we didn't smile rightly at them or do whatever. When are you going to be friendly to government agents? Give me a break. Said Jennifer, none of it's true whatsoever. It's completely false. I don't understand why, where they're coming from. On the contrary, they're the ones that are neglecting my sister physically, mentally, medically. She looks worse. Could ha- could happen to other families. Lou Pelletier said the state state agency has almost no oversight. They're omnipotent. They can do whatever they want. Our other families could go through the same nightmare because of DCF's power and relationship with Boston's Children's Hospital. Pelletier charged. He knows that Boston's Children's Hospital acts as DCF's medical advisor, which he believes to be a conflict of interest. The fox is guarding the hen house, Lou, Lou Pelletier said of the situation. There is, there is, so there is a little evil game plan that has been going on by Boston's Children's. The Pelletiers will, be keep, will keep fighting for Justina with the help of Liberty Council although they may not get a court date until May when Johnson is scheduled to take make another ruling. It isn't clear when the Massachusetts Superior Court and Federal Courts will rule under other of writ of habeas, habeas corpus and the civil right suit the family has brought. In all my years in practice, i never been, I never seen a more barbaric overreach by state agency. Liberty Council Chairman Mount Staver said, The family has asked us to pursue every legal means necessary to get their daughter home. It looks like this battle is far from over. Hmm. It's funny. I have to, it's very insulting when there was a report when they say that um, they, the family used profanity towards them towards DCF. I just wonder what was the questions DCF was asking them. These pathetic treasonous vultures that they are, they need to be thrown in prison, do a complete overhaul on DCF, and do a grand jury on these scumbags. Because the fact is this, I'm not saying not all parents are bad. You have your hand full. But don't take it on on every family that's wicked. That's more like a repressive hatred approach. And as far as I'm concerned, the state of Massachusetts, all right, that's what it is, are just just a bunch of parasites that don't really give a damn about the families because they believe the state, it belongs to the state. All right, Allah 1984. And the fact is, they happened in Nazi Germany. Remember Hitler's youth? Oh, yeah. So, these are just examples. And including the whole Obama army. Okay, yes we can, or yes we sham. Another form of tyranny, my friends. And who's paying the bill? Everyone in the state of Massachusetts. And I love it when their license tag said, The Spirit of America. 
Yep. They should add that the spirit of America has been in limbo for a good 50 to 100 years. People in Massachusetts need to start waking up too. Doesn't matter what party you're in. Family rights are natural born rights guaranteed under our Ninth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. And I know they do have an Article 1 of their state constitution says the same thing about natural born rights. Shame on these people. And I hope Johnson, Judge Johnson, could get thrown in prison too. Lock him up like a pig that he is. And you can tell him that, and I don't care. But this is what you have to really look at, my friends. It's happening everywhere, even including the great state of Florida. During the Jeb Bush era, DCF is an issue. Yep, child, child, child slave trafficking this does exist. And there's people within our governmental agencies. They, be, they are being getting caught. So everyone needs to stand, support these individuals, including every other family that have been, in, been victimized by this tyrannical entity. All right, that's my little rant on that, on that area. Let me just hit the next one. It was from the Libya Herald, the new independent Libya Daily. And um, it's Alitalia, Alitalia cancels Tripoli flights until the 31st of March. This was written by Tom Westcott, and I got this from via. This is via LibyanWarTheTruth.com, which I do follow them on Twitter, and you should do. Do you have a Facebook page as well, or not? Go to LibyanWarTheTruth.com. You can subscribe and get all their information. And I'm going to be um, reading right now. This is from this article is written by Tom Westcott. It actually was on um, the 26th of March this year, and it is announced here, Alitalia is the la latest international airline to cancel flights to Tripoli. We decided to cancel flights yesterday because of security issues at the airport. An Italia employee told the Libya Herald, we plan to restart flights on the 31st of March. The Italian airline said that the passengers affected by the cancellations could either rebook on flights after the 31st of March or could get, the or could get their tickets refunded. Lesthesania and Austrian Airlines also canceled flights until 31st of March following the two security incidents at the airport on Friday and Saturday. And um, British Airways confirmed today that it has suspended flights until the 27th of March. And in effect, this means the next flight due to operate could be outbound on 30th of March, a spokesperson for the BA said. And let's hit the other links here on the two security instances okay the one from a missile attack all right at Tripoli Airport and um, you can get that from the other past that from the, the, the from the link I'm right I've read and there's another incident that happened on a Sunday and um, uh, it's taking a little time yeah second a second missile attack so there's like two missile attacks that hit the Tripoli airport. That's why they're up canceling, canceling for security reasons to protect their employees and passengers. So, um, and this is what uh, Joanne Joanne had to say about this from the Libyan the Libyan War the Truth .com. and she wrote here: the major airlines suspended flights to Tripoli amidst security issues. The Libyan people are fighting with the Islamic extremists all over Libya. The tribes of Libya who make 98% of all Libyans have joined together to clean their country of Islamic terrorist groups. These terrorist groups were put in Libya by force by the U.S. imperialist nations and NATO. They include Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood, Asnar al-Sharia, LIFG, and others. Oh yeah, seek a governmentally funded, I'll say my friends. The terrorists are like cancer in Libya and they don't want to give up their golden goose easily so there will be bloodshed but the Libyan people will prevail. They are strong and fight for the love of their country and their freedom from tyranny. Godspeed the Libyan people and the great Libyan tribes. Yep, I have to agree on that. 
And um, and I remember what President Obama made that announcement that they want to attack Libya for the for the love of democracy. Yeah, look what the hell is going on down there. Thank you, Barry, you drone killing Uncle Tom Chicken Hawk. I'm proud of it and support you in 2008. And 2012 has nothing to do with your race, sc- race or color of your skin, but you're nothing more than a bend over bob to the New World Order. And don't worry, I said the same thing to George W. Bush and Flip Flop Rick Scott, and of course Rick Perry. All right, so it doesn't matter about your race, color, skin. And I know you're never a Muslim. I don't know why some of these people think you are. To me, as a total sham and laughable, all right? It's like saying you're a Christian too. So what do you do? You pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you for be, having me be a bellboy to the globalist and I will have drones and I will sing God bless the patriarch in Jesus' name, amen. That's your version of your religious belief. You're nothing more than a dirty, corrupt hypocrite and you need to be ashamed of yourself and even your family should condemn you for it. Because the truth of the matter is, my friends, is even the people in those Islamic nations, as Muslims, hate our president. They're not impressed. Okay? They still want to have have him exposed as some great man on all these sports channels. Give me a break. I, I like puke, laugh, or dial 911 if I have to. It has nothing to do with being a Democrat or Republican. Or that. It's principles. This man needs to be thrown in prison. I've been saying that. I said that to my brother about five, six years ago. He thought I was crazy, but I had to his voting records to back it up and his past practice, including his past practice. It has nothing to do, do has nothing to do digging through the holes, but based on other reports and even on his voting record from like as a US US senator, yeah, I was not impressed with this man. So he is held he is held responsible. I can't say full, but he's involved. And this man needs to be thrown in prison for it. War crimes. Treat him like Harry Kissinger and George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. War crimes on President Obama and his lackeys. All right? Being a globalist bellboy doesn't have his benefits. And I will di- and I digress. So, um, and how I got one thing. All those people that protested during the, Iraq, the Iraqi war and say Bush and Cheney are warmongers, how come I don't see him do it to Obama? You are because a lot of them are a bunch of cowardly hypocrites. That's all I have to say about that, my friends. All right, well, we got to go one more here. And this is a little bit more positive news. This is from Activist Post. So that's a good organization. And it, happened, it came out today. The fifth city in America bans NDAA indefinite detention. This was in Middleton, Idaho. In a unanimous vote of four to nothing, the Middleton, Idaho City Council banned the application of the NDAA and the law, laws of war within their city. With the passage of the Middleton Resolution, five cities have now stood for the constitutional rights of their people. What's unique about this win, though, it, it is sincerity, sincerity and quick action of the council. Middleton is a little city with a big heart. Hold on here, excuse me. Just gotta let me just bring this. Good. In twenty the twenty twelve NDAA or National Defense Authorization that contains two provisions, sections ten twenty one and ten twenty two, which violates over fourteen provisions of the US Constitution. These sections known as the detention provisions allow for a definite military detention of any person, including an American citizen, without charge or trial. Further, they allow for the extrajudicial execution, torture, and rendition of any person held in military custody as well as a lockdown of American cities under military control. Milton joins Albany, New York, Webster, and Oxford, Massachusetts, Gem County, and Emmett, Idaho in declaring a city and is not a, not a battlefield, not subject to the laws of war, and no person will arrest or capture any person in Middleton or citizen of Middleton within the city United States with the intent of the detention under the law of war. 
or actually subject a person in Middleton to disposition to disposition under the law of war or any subject a person to target killing a Middleton or a citizen of Middleton within the United States. Pandas Idaho Jason Casella noted Panda Idaho would like to congratulate the great people of Middleton who have now become the second city in Idaho to block indefinite detention and laws of war. They elected a fine group to represent them. I've been to a lot of city council meetings and never seen one so efficient and detail oriented. The people applaud Middleton Council's Milton's council for honoring their oath and doing so with no reservations. As Jason said, the count city council of Middleton deserves some special recognition in most cities and counties, including all the above. The NDA resistance had to apply massive pressure to get anything passed. In Middleton, it was different. Thanks to the behind-the-scenes work of Councilor Lenny Recio, when the resistance presented the Restoring Constitutional Governance Resolution for their consideration, the council did not hesitate. They understood their oaths and acting from their hearts without a word and with only three citizens in the chamber asking them to defend their rights of the people. The council did not hesitate. Acting on one accord after less than 10 minutes of discussion, the Middleton City Council passed the RCGR unanimously on Wednesday. Please take this time to thank the one of the city council member or mayor of Middleton for the relentless dedication to liberty. All the links are in here. And I will post this on my Spreaker page. The NDA resistance is rising. Six jurisdictions have already banned the NDA law, laws of war from their air area. Yours could be next. Get started. Get expert help. For your community here, go to panayunite.org slash tape back. You can donate. Donate to Panda Unite. Invite others as well. I have to say, homage for those elected servants in Middleton, Idaho. The message has been sent once again from the people in Washington, including Barack Obama, who signed this other treasonous bill. I thank them in the bottom of my heart for making this happen. And everyone that's listening, especially with the United States, can take the initiative on petitioning these NDAA um, resolutions to your county or municipality or to your state. I have to do this in Florida. Everyone needs to take, needs to get involved. Spread this information out to everyone you know. It is important. Important because we're looking at our children's sakes, including our enemies within our communities, which is petty compared to these slugs in Washington, D.C. Yes, I am being critical towards my service in Washington, D.C. that supported the language in this provision, the NDAA. But um, I like it because... Who, who owns our bodies? We do, not them. And, and, it, and, it, and, what, and what these provisions within the NDAA is anti-Bill of Rights. So they're saying, we can come in, we can do whatever we want to fight the war on terror. Actually, my friends, the war on terror is a conflict with ourselves. Just like the war on drugs, education, and guns. Just to name a few. I warn this pe I warn these to people. A week after September, around September 18th, 2001, when George George W. Bush made an announcement in the State of the Union address saying that we're, having, we're fighting the war on terror. You with us or with the terrorists? We should all just bow down to him or all these other lackeys in Washington, kiss the floor they walk on. Give me a break. You need us more we need you. That's all I have to say about it. And I do thank you for listening, my friends. And um, I will post all this on my speaker page as soon as possible. You can send your comments. Love me, hate me. Thumb, thumbs up, thumbs down. Criticize me. Commend me. Toss me some um, input. I'll be awesome. And um, you could reach me on Spreaker, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google+, 
and YouTube. That's all for now. And like all, as always, the amount of resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate societies. Thank you for your time. Take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.